Oh, a, a couple things, man. I just got to say that I really, really appreciate so much of y'all showing a lot of love for the uh, the video that we did uh, with Jeff's Rebic. Of course, a uh, big shout out to him for even being willing to do it. Uh, but shout out to y'all, too, because I, I just saw so many comments supporting, um, showing love and just... I appreciate y'all, man. Seriously, I appreciate y'all. I know I tell y'all that all the time, but I, I mean it because I mean it. Uh, and y'all show a lot of love. So thank you for that uh, big time. People who I, I people who I hadn't seen coming in months. I uh, saw them coming out the woodworks and whatnot, uh, but I appreciate it. The video was a lot of fun. Um, it was super cool of, of Jeff being willing to share some of his time because obviously y'all saw he was busy. He was busy doing a mock draft while we were talking. Um, so shout out to Jeff for being willing to come on because that that interview was a, a whole lot of fun. It was a whole lot of fun, and um, hopefully we get some more in, in the future with Jeff and just with really whoever, man, really whoever. I, I appreciate you all allowing me to uh, do something for a, a job that is fun, that we enjoy, um, and that we can share experiences like that uh, with all of y'all too, because. Without support from y'all, then there ain't wouldn't none of this stuff be happening. So I appreciate it. Um, another thing, I gotta give a shout out to my guy, uh, Strength King, my guy Kev, because he hit me up. Uh, he hit me up on Instagram and he said, "What if I told you Marlon Humphrey was only drafted one year before Lamar and Company? It seems like he's been here much longer, or is it just me?" And I was like, "No, that's wrong. He was drafted two years before Lamar. It wasn't no one year." He was drafted in 2017. Like, and Lamar was drafted, and then I was like, oh, wait. Hold up. It actually was one year. And that, like, really had me tripping out, man. Because I'm like, man, it seemed like Marlon Humphrey, uh, it seemed like he'd been around for a long time. It seemed like he'd been around, like, significantly longer than Lamar. Not, like, five years more than him, but, like, it seemed like he'd been around, like, two, three years longer than Lamar. And for him to have literally just been drafted, like, right before Lamar, that was crazy to me, man. Um, but shout out to my guy for bringing that to my attention, because I did not even realize that. Uh, but anyway, um, it's draft season. It's draft time. Uh, the draft is literally, um, I'm recording this on Tuesday at 6.40 p.m., April 26th. Um, so the draft is in two days. It's in a little... More than 48 hours. I think it starts at, what, the first round starts at 7 or 8. I don't even remember. Y'all know we're going to be doing a live stream and whatnot. Y'all know how it goes. But anyway, um, Ian Rappaport. Shout out to my guy Brent uh, Brent G on Twitter because I'm not going to butcher his last name because I don't know how to say it. Um, but he has showed a, a clip, a video uh, that talked about the Ravens, that, that they had been making some calls to possibly trade up. Um, and I just wanted to talk about what that could possibly mean. Uh, if the Ravens are making some calls to trade up. Now, we obviously know it's not for a quarterback. Unless you're Bucky Brooks and you want to use his system. No, not for a quarterback. Um, Ian Rappaport said that it could possibly be for a pass rusher or a cornerback. Now, those are some legitimate needs of the Baltimore Ravens. But let's talk about what it even means that they are possibly trying to trade up. Uh, one, smokescreen. Could be a smokescreen. And shout out to y'all because y'all y'all are on it, man. Y'all are on it. There was a, a thread on the Ronnie Stanley video, and there were like probably several of them, but there was a thread on the Ronnie Stanley video that talked about how some people felt like this was possibly his camp leaking this stuff out, that Ronnie Stanley was ahead of schedule and, or he's on schedule and on pace and whatnot. And some people felt like it was a smoke screen by the Ravens. Like, oh, man, they, they saying that Ronnie Stanley, he's, uh, he's going to be, he's going to pace to start 2022, but them trying to throw people off from them possibly taking a tackle. And if a tackle, if a certain tackles drop, then Ravens will be like, oh, okay, ain't nobody going to see this coming and grab one. So shout out to y'all for being on that. Um, and I think most people, like most Ravens fans that I saw in the comment section, they were very happy about the news about Ronnie Stanley. But at the same time, they were being cautiously optimistic. Because like, we obviously hope that he is on pace for 2022 to start. But we hope that he's healthy and stays healthy and remains healthy. So that's a lot of big ifs. But Ravens, they, they can't go into the season relying on ifs. So I would still expect them to take a tackle. But anyway, back to this news about them possibly trading up. Could be a smokescreen. Could be a smokescreen to sort of try to put some pressure on some other people to trade up uh, to really get a certain play that they want while the Ravens may have somebody else on their mind. Uh, it, all, it also could mean that they are trying to trade up. 
which I don't think many people would have a problem with that. You have 10 draft picks. There's no way you really getting ready to sign 10 rookies. 10? 10 rookies? No. Nah. There's no way. Like, there's no way you're adding 10 rookies to the roster. I just don't, I just don't see it happening. Maybe like 7, okay, 7, uh, but 10? No, nah, I don't see it. Uh, so, so I could legitimately see the Ravens trading up um, to try to acquire more picks. I mean, excuse me, trading up and using, uh, look at that, my, my mind is scrambled right now. I could see the Ravens trading up and using some of the more picks that they have to trade up because they have a lot of ammo, especially in the fourth round. You know, fourth round, they got like 50 million picks there. Um, so I could see this as something that could be legitimate. Um, now, it could mean that they want quality over quantity. Um, and that would be having less picks. Yeah, but having higher picks. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be mad at that at all. And I don't think really anybody would. Um, now, another thing it could mean uh, is that, yeah, they, they got their eyes on somebody. Could mean that they got their eyes on somebody. A lot of people have been talking about uh, Kayvon Thibodeau. And, man, I, I was watching a clip from him talk to, who was he talking to? I don't know if it was Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, or somebody else. Maybe it was Daniel, not Daniel Jeremiah. Maybe it was Andrew Siciliano. Maybe it was him. But I was listening to this guy speak, and I'm like, man. This dude sound like old school guy, like he been around the block and whatnot. He sound like he got so much life experience. Like the, the way that this guy speaks, he speaks with so much knowledge. He, he is very careful in choosing his words. He, um, I, I, I just loved hearing him talk uh, because you thought like his answer was going to go one way, but he, he kept it calm and he didn't, he didn't fall for the bait. Because I think the question was, oh, why aren't you, uh, why aren't, why aren't you like considered to be the number one pick or something like that? But, uh, you know, a lot of people could have been like, hey, I should be the number one pick. I'm the best player in this draft. Da -da -da -da. Uh, or I feel like I'm the best player in this draft. But his, his, I forgot exactly what he said, but I was very impressed with his answer. And I'm like, man, OK, now I, I see you. You got you got your media training early and on point. Um but yeah, the Ravens could be interested in somebody uh, that maybe some of us are thinking about, maybe some of us are not thinking about. But it could really mean something real, something true, that the Ravens are trying to trade up. Um, another thing, too, that it could mean uh, is that they actually want to trade down. They actually want to trade down. Um, there's been a lot of talk. And right now, you, you're going you're gonna to literally hear everything. You're going to hear everything from every team Every scenario, because it just, like right now, I, I just, I, I can't even really get caught up. Because you hear so much stuff. Of course, recently, like today, it's been all kind of stuff going on. It's been all this talk about, oh, the Houston Texans, they did the most extensive homework on Derek Stingley. And da da da, -da. Then they're talking about the Jets. Then talking about, they're talking about the Houston Texans. Oh, their pick is the wild card pick. And I'm like, man, let's just get to the draft, man. Kyle, I'm, I'm like, let, let's just get to the draft, man. Because I'm, I'm just ready for all these questions to be answered. I'm ready for all this stuff to be cleared up so we know exactly who's going where. We get to see it, and it gets to come to fruition, and it's done. It's done. It's no more ifs. It's no more I wonders. It's no more, oh, could they go here? No. They are picked. They're selected, and we're ready to go. So... I'm excited for it, man. I'm getting a little more and more excited as each day passes and as each day goes closer. Um, but as far as Ravens, again, they, they got so many options, man. They have so many options. Uh, I, one of the things that I've been thinking about is if they were to trade back. Um, they already, I mean, they show they ain't afraid to do business with the Chiefs. Um, it, it, I wonder if the Chiefs, if the Chiefs really had their eye on somebody, would they trade their two first round picks to move up uh, to 14? Um, and I'm sure the Ravens will probably get him something else, like a third or a fourth or something like that. Or the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay. Now that's a little tricky one there, though. But, so, but the Green Bay Packers would be another one. Is it the possibility that the Ravens could trade their 14th pick for two first round picks from the Green Bay Packers? So they're gonna have a, uh, they're gonna have some options. There, then there's rumors today too about the Eagles. The Eagles been calling about uh, moving up, I think, too. So I mean, you, you're gonna hear everything right around now. And these rumors, they're going to start to heat up more and more and more. Um, that's why I'm just ready. 
I'm just ready for everything to go down starting on Thursday night. Uh, oh, we did get, actually get a draft trade, though. I think the the Patriots, they traded like a fifth and sixth or something with somebody. I forgot who it was, but that happened. So that was the first big blockbuster uh, draft day trade uh, or trade of draft picks um, that we got so far. We ain't had any other ones yet, but... The Patriots, they 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 the first. Whoever the other team was, I mean, it, I, when I read it, I was like, oh, okay, well there we go. That that's earth shattering right there. Um, but anyway, we'll see how this thing goes. We'll see if the Ravens end up moving up. Because again, they can't. If they want to, they can. If they want to, they can. They really can. They can move up. They can stay put. They can move back. But one thing, um, in my opinion, I think if they do move back. And they acquire, say, for instance, they acquire multiple first-round picks. They trade that 14 and another one for two first-round picks from somebody. Then I think that they would still use some of their other picks later on to move up, too. So they would trade back in the first round, but use some of them fourth-round picks to, to move up in, like, maybe the third or in the second, package them so they can move up somewhere else. So Ra I, Ravens ain't staying put this draft, man. Not, not necessarily not staying put at 14, but they're not, for every draft spot that they have right now, they're not just going to stay there. There's no no way, not no 10 pick. There's no way, absolutely no way that they just post up, all right, every draft pick that we got, that's what we're picking. No, they ain't doing that. Ain't no way. No way. So let's see how this thing goes. I'm ready to see it. Y'all, I know y'all are ready. Oh, I know y'all are ready to see it. Um, Tomorrow, we are going to have a uh one more question from subscriber uh, uh it's probably going to be a very long episode because we got a lot of questions y'all don't need to send any more we are already set um if uh, and probably if you send a question it, it's it's not going to be part of the episode now because we we already got it set and then we'll be at the draft and then boom then after the draft then send all the questions that you want to i like, like y'all already do which i appreciate we all appreciate because they're fun um, but yeah, man, I'm going to have a nice long question from subscriber episode, uh, and then boom, and then the following day, it'll be draft time. So we, of course, we'll be doing our draft live stream. That's the plan. Um, so y'all come through. It's going to be fun as usual. Well, hopefully it's fun. Hopefully everybody enjoys themselves and whatnot. Uh, but it's always fun. We always draft the first round of the uh, NFL draft. Been doing that for, hmm. I feel like six years, maybe seven, I don't know, something like that, something, something crazy. We've been doing it for a while now, um, but we love it. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Again, I, I appreciate everybody coming through on a video with Jeff Zrebic, um, and big shout out to him for even being willing to come through. I love y'all. Y'all stay up. We out.